Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining me for another edition of Paragon's product training. Today, we are going to focus on the second part of our general equipment training. My name is Alan Abbott, and I cover the Alabama and Mississippi territories for the Paragon team. And I hope you had a chance to join us for part one of our equipment training, where we really took a deep dive into the key and critical components that make up some of the stretch wrapping equipment that we work on. And this is important to helping your customers deliver optimum containment as well as producing lower cost per pallet wrap for them. In this edition, we're going to really take a more vague approach and look at how those different variables, control panels, as well as the equipment settings can impact containment for your customer and how to set standards and establish standards for them if they don't have any. Because at the end of the day, we sell containment and every customer has different products so each customer requires their own specific set standards for containment so it really gives you the opportunity to come in and establish some credibility learn about their process and how we can help them establish those standard and set some expectations for them so we're really going to cover as we took a deeper dive into the equipment side of this presentation previously Today we're going to look at some of the external factors that help stretch our film, some of the things here your customers have control over, and some of the things uh, the manufacturer controls as far as the type of film, the resin in the film, and the performance characteristics of the different film they're using. So some of these things your customer has the ability to control, which can help them with their containment standards. Some of these things they have no control over. It's in the cans of the manufacturers that produce high performance films like ourselves. So it kind of goes back into my presentation that we did where we really talked about the different performance characteristics of blown film versus cast film. Some of these have different characteristics in how soft or stiff they are, which affects their resistance to stretch, which impacts their overall containment that they're capable of delivering. There's tons of different variables that go into that. We have a factorial that we like to use, but the one common denominator that doesn't change through all of these variables that you're looking at is containment. We have several different resin manufacturers out there that produce the resins that we use in our films. There's several different stretch film manufacturers. There's a lot of different equipment manufacturers. There's different gauges of film. And the one common denominator that each one of these variables impact is containment. And I always have a little saying that not all stretch film is created equally. And that's true because if you have a customer, and we all have one, I know we can probably think of one as I rattle off this sentence, but, you know, that one customer that's fixated on using a 70 gauge. Well, just send me your best price on the 70 gauge. That's all we've ever used. That's all we're going to use. That's all we like to use. Well, Mr. Customer, did you know that Paragon manufactures several different 70 gauge machine films? We manufacture 70 gauge in Nexus, Nexus UVI, Contrast, Cold Force, Global Force, Ultimate Force, and each one of those have a different performance characteristic that make that film unique to what your customer's needs are. And those can impact the containment that they're setting forth for their standards. So if you know, if they have a new piece of equipment operating at high RPMs, that takes more resistance to stretch. So a stiffer film like Nexus would be a good fit. So each one of those can be manufactured differently to have different characteristics. This does not give your customer control over that. That's in the manufacturer's hands. But the one thing that we're able to do is we can set those standards based on their containment. And containment is the one constant that we can measure. Because we can measure this out in the field, we then know the performance expectations that we're looking for. So that helps us add more value to the packaging solutions you're already providing to your customer in the fact that we can set those standards, set those expectations, and then not just really focus on the gauge, but really helping them understand how the different performance characteristics of the film with their equipment are all different variables that impact their containment. And as we've learned throughout this, there's several factors. There's 15 billion of them. 
and one of those was the gauge of film that we were just talking about. There's other things that we focused on in our last presentation, such as your pre-stretch, how the gears can be changed, the rotational speeds, the carriage speeds, the control panel settings that your customer uses, and what type of film are they currently using based on their containment standards. Everybody has different products, so each customer is going to have different standards. So we have to understand and discover what those standards are so we can set that baseline, set those expectations, and then meet and exceed those. So we learned a lot about different types of stretch wrapping equipment, which can impact containment. But at the end of the day, each one of these pieces of equipment are delivering containment, and it offers your customer different control over how they deliver the containment with the particular film, the equipment that they're using, and the product that they're wrapping. Again, they have expectations for containment, at least I hope they do. If they don't, then this is a great opportunity for you to grab your Paragon rep and go help your customer establish a standard for containment for their products. Because if you can do this, again, that's the one thing we can measure. We can measure the containment. Control panels are very similar to equipment. They all have the same settings that they can control. Each control panel is unique and they all help impact your customer's containment. This is where your customer has control of the external forces that are being applied to their product after the film has gone through the carriage. So things like carriage speed, rotational speed, the tension setting, even though all these control panels look unique, they're all accomplishing the same thing in the fact that they're giving your control, your customer, the control to impact their containment. Now, as we've moved into the future in 2020, some of these pieces of equipment are more sophisticated and they give your customer more specific control as to how they would like to impact their containment. Some of them let them really dial it in specifically based on the product, if they're wrapping different size and shape loads, or some of the other ones that we're used to seeing are more basic and they give the customer minimal control, which we're going to get into how that impacts containment. But the reason I showed you all these different control panels is because they're all accomplishing the same thing. They're giving your customer control to impact the external forces that are affecting the containment on their load. So let's look at some of the critical settings that each wrapper has. So on the right, I've got a picture of a new control panel on automatic, and this is giving the customer more specific control over some of the critical wrap settings. And these are unique to each equipment manufacturer. So each setting here can impact containment in its own way. Our goal as packaging consultants and stretch film experts, as well as equipment consultants, is to help your customers not just understand how their equipment's performing, but how to utilize their control panel, which is controlling those external forces that are putting the film onto the pallet, which is impacting their containment. So by making one small adjustment on any one of these settings that you see here, this is going to impact their containment. If we change the number of top and bottom wraps, this will impact their containment. If we change the tension on the bottom wraps for a slow startup so there's not as much tension being applied as the cycle starts, this will impact containment. Every adjustment you make on this control panel will in some way, shape, or form impact containment. But the only way to know this is to measure it. That's the one constant, as we talked about at the beginning, that we're able to measure. We can measure that containment that allows us to monitor it, and then from there we can manage it. So if you're doing a film audit and you're going back into a customer that you've already established containment standards for, and you've seen a change from when you were there previously, then that's monitoring. So now you can manage and go into those settings and try and deliver those optimum containment standards that you had so we know the expectations for the film's performance as well as the equipment's performance so that we can achieve that containment expectation that we set forth. So one of those things that your customer can control their containment and it has a big effect on it is the rotational speeds. And we're not just talking about turntables, even though I have one pictured here. This also pertains to your rotary arms. So the speed of the rotation will affect the containment. So for instance, if the speed of the rotation is slower, that's applying less force on the external factors after the film's already come through the carriage and onto the pallet. So the slower that arm or turntable is spinning, the less force is being delivered onto the pallet, which is lowering the on-pallet stretch, 
which is impacting containment. So let's flip the coin over. If that rotational speed is turning faster, now we are applying more force because it's rotating faster. So more force is being applied to the pallet, and this is impacting containment because we are increasing our on-pallet stretch, delivering more compression, which is delivering optimum containment. So rotational speeds can impact containment, whether it's too slow or too fast. But again, you can't figure this out unless you're constantly measuring the containment. Another variable that goes into containment and how it's affected that your customer can control is the speed of the carriage. The speed of the carriage is another way that they can affect their containment. There's some problems that we've discussed with carriages in part one. If you missed part one, you'll have an opportunity to catch that again tomorrow. But the speed of the carriage can affect the overlap, which is affecting the containment. So when you have overlap, what overlap means is it's the amount of film that is overlaying on the previous wrap cycle. So sometimes we see two inches, sometimes we see four inches, and the speed of the carriage is affecting the overlap as the turntable or the rotary arm are spinning. This can impact your containment as well as your on pallet stretch. Some equipment, you can adjust the carriage speed very easily and specifically. Some others are more old school and they require a potentiometer and a dial. But a really good example of this is if your carriage is going too fast, you're not going to have any overlap on that load when the cycle is completed. You'll have overlap on the way back down. But as you're watching that pallet wrap, as the carriage is moving up, you will see big gaps where the film is not overlapping at all. This can and this will affect your containment. How much so? You'll find out when you measure. Now, if we flip that back and go back a slide to the turntable speed or the rotary arm speed, and we put those two together, the turntable speed plus your carriage speed is going to affect your overlap. So the two of these working together will help you get the proper amount of overlap, which will impact your containment. So it's turntable speed, carriage speed, Will affect the amount of overlap that you have on the actual pallet itself. And you don't really know this unless you're watching it wrap as the pallet is working its way through the cycle and that carriage is moving up. You will see how much overlap you have as that carriage is working its way up. But the one thing to always look for is if it's moving too fast or too slow and how fast is the turntable rotating or the rotary arm because this will affect containment. So again, as you've joined us in part one, I'm not really going to get too far into S and W. These are two different thread patterns that come on different types of equipment. It's good to familiarize yourself with these, but again, join us for part one tomorrow. We'll do a deeper dive into these. So S and W, as we covered in part one, the main thing I like to highlight here is the amount of film to roller contact is critical when we're talking about pre-stretch in the carriage. So this is what we call F1, the internal force inside the carriage. So the amount of contact is helping to maintain the on-pallet stretch as that film is pressed up against the rollers. This delivers containment on your pallet. So we had talked about some other problems before where if you have worn down rollers, pinch rollers aren't pushed up tight enough there, this can cause slippage as the film is feeding through the carriage. When the film is slipping on those rollers, you're losing on pallet stretch. And when you lose on pallet stretch, this is impacting your containment negatively. Again, if you measure containment, you will see that. If you watch the film pay out, you can also see that you know, there's something going on there if that film is slipping through those rollers. So again, S and W, the key component here is the contact on the roller, and that is critical for maintaining on pallet stretch. If the rollers are in bad shape, pincher bars aren't there, you're going to have that slippage. And when you have slippage, you are losing on pallet stretch, which is impacting your containment. F1 inside the carriage isn't something that the customer can really control inside the control panel. Is something that you might need a service tech for if you do have some roller issues. So there's a theory in the industry that compression plus stiffness equals containment. So our goal at Paragon, we go into your customers with you, is to establish those containment standards, set those expectations, and deliver them optimum containment. So our goal is to ship your customer's product from A to B with optimum containment at the lowest cost possible in delivering this in much thinner gauges using less film, which brings us to our sustainability impact. When we say optimum containment, we're not always shooting for the stars as far as we want 50 pounds of containment. 
because every customer requires a different standard for containment. If you have a customer that's wrapping a nice, pretty A-load cardboard boxes, 2,000 pounds, they're going to require a higher level standard of containment than a customer that might be shipping empty PET bottles. We cannot crush those, so it's important that we achieve the proper amount of containment without damaging the load. So optimum containment just means what your customer requires for their standards for their product. So the real purpose for us is to teach the customers how much control they have and what they have control over. So as we talked about in the previous slides, the carriage speed, the rotary arm or turntable speed can impact containment. It also impacts overlap, which impacts containment. Your customer also controls what gauge of film that they use, what manufacturer of stretch film they're using. This can help them achieve optimal containment at the lowest cost possible. If they have a piece of equipment that is really stretching the film far, over 275%, then it'd be a good idea to lead or test with Nexus and Ultimate Force. If they have a piece of equipment that's not stretching very good and they're really focused on cost, then they might need to look at Global Force or if they're using a specialized product such as Cold Force or Contrast needing high slip, these are all things your customer can control. They can control the gauge they purchase, they can control who they purchase their film from from a manufacturer's perspective, and then they can control their equipment such as the pre-stretch gearing in there. If they decide to order new equipment, they can get new gears. If they need new rollers, they can change this. And then they can also change their control panel settings, which impacts the external forces after the film has left the carriage and goes onto the pallet. So what do we control as the manufacturer? Well, we're controlling the resins. We're controlling how stiff our film is. So, you know, for example, Nexus, Nexus UVI and Contrast are some of our stiffer films. We design them this way to help your customer achieve optimal containment without really having to have a lot of control on the control panel. Our film can do the work for them if they allow their machine to run optimally. So when we have a stiffer film, we don't want you to think film breaks or brittleness. Instead, we want you to think that it has a high resistance to stretch. That film can stretch further. When that happens, that's delivering more compression on the pallet, which is increasing the on-pallet stretch, which is delivering optimum containment. So again, that stiffer film, in conjunction with how we're delivering the film with the things the customer controls on their equipment helps us achieve optimum containment. So what type of tools do we use out in the field? I'm sure you've all done a call with one of your Paragon reps. We always have a nice little bag of goodies that we bring in to constantly measure our containment. Our goal is to go in and measure, monitor, and manage. What can we do to help you help your customers ship from A to B at the most optimum containment at the lowest cost possible. All the things here that we're doing all pertain to the different variables that affect containment. The amount of revolutions on the equipment, how much film they're using, how far they're stretching the film, understanding what pre-stretch is, F1, and what on-pallet stretch is, your F2 setting. There's a lot of different things there that impact containment and having the clear understanding to help your customer understand those is key. The other thing that's key for us is consistency. We have to be consistent when we're using these tools and speaking to your customers and understanding what their expectations are. So a lot of the tools that we use are mechanical, and that's why it's important to be consistent when you're measuring. So in the top left-hand corner here, we have a torsion tool. This is measuring the amount of force using a two-prong system. It's very consistent in the fact that it does have a green dial, but again, it's the human element. It's mechanical. So if I do it one way and your customer does it the same way, we might have similar numbers, but we're never going to have the exact same numbers because there's a human and mechanical element. And then we have an old-school uh, T-bar. We also have the old ASTM certified pull plate method. And then down in the right-hand corner, these are uh, load cells that we can put on the pallet, and these can measure the amount of containment being delivered onto the pallet at any given time. We actually do have one of these available to utilize out in the field. So if you do have a customer that you'd like to show this off to or they are really interested in learning or establishing standards for containment, we can bring these load cells in, attach them to their load, and we just wrap pallets. And these load cells will give us real-time reporting as the wrap cycle is occurring and as we're delivering compression onto that pallet. 
we can even tell it to give us a chart as it's graphing the whole cycle. We can see where containment is achieved, or we can ask it just to give us one snapshot in the center of the wrap cycle to understand what is happening at that certain time as far as how the equipment and the film characteristics are working to deliver containment onto the pallet. So there's a lot of different tools out there. The biggest thing for us is understanding the performance expectations that we need to in order to measure containment and keep those standards where they are. And remember, if your customer doesn't have any standards, this is a great opportunity for us to go in and help you add more value, explain what we're doing, and help them establish what those standards are and what those expe expectations are that we're trying to meet. So what we'll do when we go into one of these situations is, depending on the customer and the product and what challenges they're facing, we have different ways of measuring. For us, it's consistency and always knowing when and where to do it. So we always measure on the long side of the pallet because that's where you're going to get the lower number of containment of compression on the pallet than the shorter side. We also will take six measurements at minimum. We're going to measure at the top, the middle, and the bottom on all the long sides of the pallet. Now, there is some times where we'll measure all 12 sides of the pallet and we'll take the average. This is important because we don't just want to give your customer one reading. We want to take six to 12 readings, give them a nice average. So as we're establishing those standards or setting those expectations, we're going off of an average of all the different products they're wrapping, all the different load profiles. And if they're wrapping the same load every day, all day, then it's still great to be consistent measuring top, middle, and bottom on two sides. I know we all have a customer, specifically if they're an engineer, those are the customers that I will always measure all 12 sides for. They love data. They are very intuitive. They want to know what you're doing and why you're doing it. So the more information we can give somebody like an engineer, the better. And it just helps us build more credibility and explain to them why we're doing what we're doing and why we have such a focus on containment. Because at the end of the day, if our containment standards aren't where they need them, then that can lead to a load failure, which leads to damaged product, return product. It's just more issues. And for us, the number one priority is shipping from point A to point B at the most optimum containment possible for your customers. So if you have not done so, I would encourage you to sign up for our five-star training. We actually have uh, started to un unleash our new web-based version of this tool. But our goal is to really stand out and differentiate ourselves from the competition with our awesome reporting tool. So on the left is what a lot of our competitors and other reps in the industry are still using. It's a lot of numbers. It's hard to read. And it doesn't really highlight some of the key components and aspects that we're shooting for. Most importantly, containment. We're on the right-hand side. You'll see our nice, clean, colorful bar charts. This is easy to read. It's very quick for your customer to reference. They can see what we did in comparison to the current film they were using. If you made adjustments to the machine or recommendations, these will also show up in the report. And it just shows them the containment expectations that they've been doing and it shows them the containment expectations that we've set forth by using a Paragon film. So at the end of the day for us, uh, equipment performance is always key, but understanding how each of those key components affect the film's performance and overall affect the containment on your customer's product is the most critical piece of knowledge that we want to know. And the reason we want to do this is because we can constantly measure this, we can manage it, and we can monitor this. It's always great to have a baseline established, start a baseline, set standards for your customer. If they already have a baseline, learn what that is. If they don't know what that number is, we just need to measure and find out. If they haven't had load issues, shifts, damages, that's okay. We can still go in there and set that containment standard for them. And it just sets further expectations for us in the future as you do audits, adjustments, or if they do have issues down the road with a film break or if their loads have shifted, then it allows us to go back in and see what's changed. Did something on that control panel change? Did something inside the rollers change? Did they get more worn out? Is their 
a bar loose is the pincher there's other things you can look for and that's what episode one of the equipment training really goes into is things to look for because all of those critical components are affecting containment what the purpose of this was was to teach you the things that your customers have control over and the things that the film manufacturers have control over so again my name is alan abbott i really appreciate you taking some time to join me today and learning about how all of the things we've talked about and all of our presentations during this time, not just our film presentations or our equipment presentations, but the common denominator in all of these presentations is delivering optimum containment to your customers. That is the most critical and highlighted stat that we care about, and that's the one thing that separates us from our competitors is we can deliver optimum containment at the lowest cost possible for your customers, and in most aspects, we can accomplish this by using less film. So once again, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate your attendance. Uh, if you need any help, have anybody to reach out to, any questions, feel free to reach out to the rest of the team. Uh, we have Zach Poole in Georgia, Sean Mitchell in Ohio, Adam Luckin in Kentucky, Carla Thorne covers the rest of the Southeast, and I'm Alan Abbott. I'm in Alabama and Mississippi. I just want to thank you again and enjoy the rest of your afternoon.